If I speak here, you can hear me? If it's for how long, you have to get closer to the Hi everyone, we want to start and I don't have high quality sound. No, you're perfect. Yeah. That's much better. I would like to sing the blues now. Alright friends, um, hello, good afternoon and welcome. I'm going to read my notes because my brain doesn't work anymore so I have to read my notes. Uh, I want to say happy convening, everyone who's Woo! out there laughing. Aha! I see you up there laughing. All right. Uh, I have to say that it's really great to see all of you in the same room. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. These gatherings and these conversations are invaluable, and I hope that you appreciate them as much as I do. Uh, I want to begin by acknowledging that we are standing on the ancestral land of the Ohlone Ramaytush people. May their spirit guide us through our work this weekend and propel us towards collaboration and deeper understanding of our own shared humanity. A lot of time and effort goes into putting something like this together. Let me thank everyone who has and is making this gathering possible. Who Golden Thread staff are in the room? Stand up. Thank you so much for your incredible support. Um, Board of Trustees of Golden Thread, that is <laughs> our backbone, and they support everything that we do with their. Uh, financial support and their community building support. The Hewlett Foundation, who is the only foundation that supported this convening financially. I'm grateful to them. Uh, our fabulous interns. the public sessions are being live streamed on HowlRound. If you don't want to be live streamed, sit behind the, the camera. Um, also, I don't know if we are getting, are we getting uh, comments on Twitter and Facebook? We're coming in. All right, all right, well, <laughs> Julius is managing that, and if something exciting comes in, please share with us. Um, we should have said this earlier, but I'll say it now. If you have, uh, turn off your cell phones in case of an emergency, there's a door here and there's a door there. Um, and already today we've had two sessions, a fabulous conversation early in the day about how to get more of our plays on US stages. Um, and a really productive conversation just now about mentorship. Uh, and intergenerational support in our community. I'm hoping that these conversations will generate actionable uh, strategies that we can then, as a, as a steering committee or as representatives of our community, um, implement. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm gonna invite uh, members of the steering committee uh, to the stage to provide some context and background information to how we got to where we are, because as you can imagine, years and years of work and community organizing has uh, gotten us to the point that we are here. Um, where am I on my page? I don't know. Um, uh, including what I wanted to say, including the MENA survey, which Kate will talk about in our work with TCG Theater Communications Group, which Andrea will talk about. Um, I was, as I was thinking about gathering this weekend, I was reminded of a turning point in my own sort of thinking about Golden Thread and Golden Thread's role, which is actually surprising, so I thought I might share it with you. Um, a few years ago, we were doing a strategic planning uh, process for Golden Thread and we were at a staff and board retreat 
And we were having conversations about what distinguishes Golden Thread's work from other theater companies. And we were imagining a world where Middle Eastern plays are being produced by many, many theaters across the US. And in that environment, would Golden Thread still be relevant or not? Mm -hmm. and, um, and we, as we were sort of digging deep into that conversation, um, you know, we have always acknowledged that we, ki we kind of came up with the term Middle Eastern American theater. Um, we made peace with the term Middle East despite its colonialist baggage just be because of practicality and the fact that it's recognizable but always being aware of, super aware of the connotation. Um, so we've always thought about the term Middle East a lot but not the American part. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting at this retreat, uh, the conversation was about, well, we're not a Middle Eastern theater company. We're an American theater company. And you may be surprised to hear this, but that came as news to me, <laughs> right? I, I was, I, that took me, like, I was taken aback by that statement. Um, and then I started thinking about, well, what does that mean? What does, what does it mean to be producing this work in the US, in this environment? And, and this retreat was in 2013. It wasn't like during the 2000s while Iraq was being invaded and, and uh, destroyed. You know, we survived through making theater. We survived those years through making theater. So we've always been very aware of our relationship to the Middle East and what's happening there. But maybe, I think that turning point was when I actually began thinking about our community here and our existence as a growing immigrant community in the US and what that means for us making theater in San Francisco and in other cities. Um, I think that, um, discovery, you know, then we called ourselves the first American theater company uh, devoted to plays from or about the Middle East. That's where that sort of statement came from. Um, before that, we were a theater company exploring Middle Eastern cultures and identities. So it's, it's a subtle difference, but it's also a profound difference, and it's, and it's a way of, I think, looking at your work differently. Um, so uh, it, it, it made, I think that discovery, that statement made me take greater ownership of Golden Thread's role in the US um, as an organizing force in the, in the country. Before that, um, I've always had a great relationship with Jamil Khoury at Silk Road Rising and we had, with the LARC, we had launched a play commissioning program um, Middle East America, which Jamil called it Middle East America, and it was a, an ongoing program. Um, so we had, we had kind of a national network or partnership, um, but I contacted Jamil um, after this retreat and talked to him about um, what I felt was the need to actually gather our community because um, I don't know, I thought if I hadn't realized that I'm a Middle Eastern American, or that this company is an American company, then there must be so many others that are in that same situation, right? And, um, and I don't know how it is for you trying to tell these stories in your community, but it can be a lonely experience, right? You feel like you're banging your head against the wall, you feel like nobody understands what you're talking about, you feel like you have odd political beliefs. Um, and so Jamil and I began talking about how do we gather our community. Uh, the LARC uh, had been a partner to us. Catherine Corre at that point was becoming more involved with the Middle East America Initiative, but also reaching out to uh, artists in the Middle East. And so we began talking about hosting a convening and Catherine was able to host the convening uh, at the LARC in 2016. Jamil was able to organize what 
uh, TCG calls affinity group meetings during the national conference at TCG. Um, and we began kind of meeting our community, right? Like the artists that self-identify as Middle Eastern American theater artists. And um, we learned a lot in that process. I think one of my specialties is sort of to sense what's missing and then try to, I don't know, try to address it if I can. So at, at, the, at the affinity sessions, we began sensing the absence of leadership and representation in our community. And I don't have to tell you that representation matters, mm -hmm. right? Being able to tell our stories in our own words matters. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just say this, and if you wanna you know, question me about it later, do that. But the reason why the wars in the Middle East are happening, one reason is because it is justified in the popular media, in the yes. popular yes. imagination yes. of mm -hmm. Americans. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're fighting. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to counter. Mm -hmm. And that's not an easy thing. So that requires leadership. That requires national collaboration and partnership, partnership among all of us. So the affinity group meetings and the convening at the LARC generated some momentum. A lot of positive things came out of that gathering at the Lark uh, in 2016. Mona Mansour, fabulous playwright, started a, a, Middle East, uh, a Middle Eastern American playwright group at the Lark, which just recently had an evening of readings, very successful. Um, the Maya directors, actually, that idea came from that gathering at the Lark, uh, and now there are four directors. I don't know if everyone's in the room, but Yo. Um, um, and then the idea of us needing a Bill of Rights came from that gathering. Because um, the trajectory of the growth of our community, like we had gone from uh, questioning our right to tell the stories of people in the Middle East or our right to even tell our family stories to claiming and demanding space for our stories, right? Mm -hmm. So when you make that jump, then you need um, an awareness of what your role is when you're in the room and what is appropriate for them to ask you and what it isn't. So the Bill of Rights came, um, came out of that need and what I heard a lot of people say about constantly being put in the position of being the cultural consultant without getting paid for it, or uh, someone in the room sort of taking the role of being the cultural authority or the political authority on the situation. Um, and so we developed the Bill of Rights. We sort of tested it out at affinity group gatherings at TCG, got some feedback. Uh, and then the big tonal shift happened, which we made two documents. One was the Bill of Rights for Middle Eastern theater artists, and then one was an open letter to producers uh, in US theaters. So both of those kind of address the same issues, but, but from different perspectives and, and the tone is different. Uh, so slowly over the years, a lot of people have already put in a lot of sweat equity into this movement. Um, people have been working for more than 20 years to get <coughs> us to this point. And we're slowly moving from individual ideas to collective action. And collective action requires generosity, respect, openness to people's individual experiences, and a space where we can have conversation. And this gathering is about making that space. Um, <laughs> so, as we continue our conversations this weekend, I want to invite you to visualize yourself as a theater maker. Visualize yourself in 10 years. 
What kind of theater maker are you? What kind of environment do you want to be making theater in? Who are you collaborating with? Who else is in the room? Who is running that theater company? What other kind of theater are they putting on their stages? Who is on their board? Mm -hmm. What about in 20 years? What about in 50 years? I want you to visualize that. And then let's think about what can we do today? What kind of ideas and recommendations can we come up with today to bring about that vision? Our work today is about Middle Eastern American, nor Middle East North African community of theater artists. But I also want to offer that as we define the future of Middle Eastern American theater, we are in fact redefining American theater. Mm -hmm. Visualize that. Let's talk about that future. Yeah? yeah. All right, thank you. And I, now I want to invite Kate and Andrea to come on stage and Kate's going to talk about our community survey and some of our findings and then Andrea's going to talk about our work with TCG. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, um, I'm Kate Morhini. Uh, I'm the artistic producer at North Theatre in New York City. Um, we just, oh, sorry. You want Thank me to you. lower this? That's yeah, great. A bit <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, so I work uh, with North Theater at New, uh, in New York City. We um, support, develop, and produce the work of artists of Middle Eastern descent. Um, and as part of, so uh, continuing the work that uh, was just discussed, uh, we were asked to be part of a group of theaters of color at the latest TCG uh, Theater Communications Group Conference. Um, and as we began to sort of prepare for this, and Andrea will talk uh, a lot more about our, our time there, but as we began to prepare um, and think about sort of how we could best serve the community, we thought, well, we need to first get a sense of who, who is this community. We have a sense sort of of, you know, who are, these are some artists working in New York, these are some artists working in California, Chicago, you know, across the country, but who, who are we as a group and how can we best represent this group and come together as a coalition? Um, so we, we've created this MENA Theater Community Survey, um, and we thought that as the community grows in the U.S., this would be a way to build a national network to advocate for our community as a whole. Um, and we hope to use the survey to better understand our needs um, and help advance our cause and best represent the concerns of the community as a whole. Um, as was mentioned in one of the earlier sessions today, I just want to say it again, um, we, just, we decided to define Middle East and Middle Eastern very broadly using a definition developed by Golden Thread and Silk Road Rising. Uh, the definition is that uh, we embrace the multiplicity of ethnic and religious identities that span Southwest Asia, North Africa, Central Asia, the Caucasus, parts of Mediterranean Europe, and our diaspora <coughs> communities. We understand that our, uh, our respective backgrounds in terms of rich pluralism and interconnectedness. So just want to say that, um, that that was really important in coming up with this, that it felt like an inclusive uh, document. Uh, so in the initial survey, it still is, it's, a, it's a, a live, active document. So if there's anyone here or listening through HowlRound who hasn't filled it out, uh, we, you know, we can maybe post the link. Uh, the goal is to get as many folks as possible to fill it out. Um, we have 100, as of June, we had 191 participants uh, from both the US and across the world. There were 16 theatrical disciplines represented. represented. Um, and this is my favorite. Collectively, we had in this group 2,492 years of experience in the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, we, the most important takeaway, there was some demographic information that we collected. Uh, we found that the top five theatrical disciplines represented were um, performers, playwrights, directors, producers, and administrators, but there were, of course, uh, folks in many other fields as well. Those were just the top five. Um, we found that um, of the, the regions in the uh, US that were represented, we found that 37.7% were from New York, 23.6% uh, were from Chicago, 
Um, 11% were from the San Francisco Bay Area and 8.9% were from LA. Again, this was just our initial survey of the folks who we were able to reach out to. Uh, we also had 18.8 .8 folks from other regions, including uh, a number of folks from outside the US. Uh, we measured age range, uh, you know, whether or not folks identify as a person of color. Um, we found that 27% of our community or of the people we, uh, we surveyed identified as a member of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, so we just wanted to see sort of who, you know, who exists in our community. We found that a number of folks were members of professional theater unions or organizations. 66% were a member of Actors Equity. 5.7% um, were a member of stage directors and choreographers guild. Um, we found that 14.4% were members of theater communications group. Um, so this, this data is helpful in that uh, it, it'll help us to sort of chart the growth of our community over time. Um, the, the biggest takeaway though from the survey was we wanted to know what were the top most important issues facing our community? What did people think were the things we should most focus on as a, as a network? Um, and those were, the first was uh, more of our plays produced at major theaters. So, you know, that, that makes sense that that was the top thing that people thought we should focus on. The second was greater national visibility, followed by more seats at the table or greater voice and impact, followed by access to funding, followed by creating a MENA community network, which is some of the work that we're hoping to do now. Um, so with that overview of, of the survey, I also have, we have hard copies of it if anyone wants to take uh, a look later on. I'll hand it over to Andrea to talk more about our work at TCG in the Theater Communications Group Conference. Hey y'all. Hey. How you doing? Good. What a beautiful room. I'm so excited, no really, what a beautiful room. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm fresh off a plane, so this is quite <laughs> off the top, and I will do my best to appropriately represent. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrea Asaf. I'm the Artistic Director of Art to Action, Inc., which is based in Tampa, Florida. Um, and I'm Lebanese American, uh, third generation. And, uh, and we all come to this, I feel like this is a moment, I feel like we're in a delta right now, mm -hmm. right? This is a moment of many streams, many rivers conjoining and yeah, mm -hmm. converging, convening, yes, thank you. Uh, and so I'm gonna talk about a little bit of some of those other streams, um, perhaps the, the main one, um, the, the largest body of water leading us here is what uh, Taranj began with. Um, but also, uh, so TCG, Theater Communications Group, um, has had over the last several years an initiative under the framing of EDI, or Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Um, and I wanna give props to TCG for really listening to artists of color in the field uh, many years ago who ha that had a lot of feedback about how we were feeling served or not served well enough. And, uh, and the leaders, um, the leadership in TCG that really took on this initiative to make substantive change in the organization in a way that would impact our experience going. So if you haven't been to a TCG conference or you haven't been in many years, um, go back or try it out because it feels quite different now. And that's partly due to this uh, cohort work that TCG has been doing, um, led uh, primarily by Emilia Cachapiro and Elena Chang. Um, and so uh, what's unique this year is that they're in the fourth um, cohort. And they decided to make the fourth cohort focus specifically on theaters of color and particularly networks of color within the theater community. Um, because some feedback that was received earlier on was that uh, from artists of color who were participating was that this feels like white America is still the center of the conversation. Mm. Yeah? And how do we talk about equity, diversity, and inclusion 
and even go further and talk about justice uh, in a way that doesn't center the historical center, right? That is truly as, um, as complex as we all are and as our field is today, right? So they made this commitment um, to bring together uh, theaters of color and networks of color um, that serve theater artists. Also, multiple streams leading to a delta, yes. Um, also, uh, I want to lift up the work of Leslie Ishii and East West Players and the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists um, that also was convening networks of color uh, in 2016 and, and doing that work prior um, to start to talk about how could the Latinx theater commons and the multiple black theater networks that are in the field and the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists, which is relatively new, and trying to understand how to be inclusive of what we deal with calling the Middle East. <laughs> Understanding that a large part of it is uh, Southwestern Asia, yes, uh, and also North Africa and all of our complexities, right? Um, so so uh, Leslie, she was leading, organizing that work under the auspices of ACADA convening in 2016. TCG was working on cohort four and developing that. And uh, the Lark and Golden Thread and Silk Road and all these folks were working on figuring out how to convene us together. And th these multiple streams have led us to this moment. And I also want to make sure that we acknowledge and lift up other organizations that aren't necessarily theater organizations, but that have had a big impact in our ability to come together. And so I want to name MISNA and RAWI, the uh, Writers Network, and the Arab American National Museum, and their convening um, currently called MOVE. Um, and make sure that we recognize that, you know, all these things bubbling in all these places in the 21st century um, are leading us to having greater collective voice and power and input and vision, yes? Um, and that we cannot do that in isolation. We, it, it, we are in a historical moment in which we must, I feel, and like Taran said, talk to me later if you don't agree, but <laughs> I feel we must embrace our status as a community of color in the United States. Now I know that's complex for us in the way that it's complex for the Latinx community, right? Because many of us pass as white, many of us live our daily lives as white, many of us can't pass and can't live that way, right? And yet we're all trying to have, we're all trying to share our cultural and artistic experiences within this highly racialized society that we live in called the United States of America, which is itself a problematic term, but that's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if we are trying to build voice and representation and collective power in, around cultural representation and around you know, the direction that our, this country is going in and who we are and what we do in the world that we're all a part of if we live here. Like it or not, we're all a part of what the United States is doing in the world, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's a lot to reconcile for a lot of us, right? Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> but we can't, we can't do it alone. As, as complex as our communities are, and hard as it is for us to get on the same page, and to get together about who we are, and what the Middle East is, and where we fit in it, and what it means to be that in this country, in this context, we are doing that alongside communities of color that have been in this conversation, and leading this conversation, and doing this work, and fighting this fight for a very, very long time. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? We can learn from each other. We can learn from the Latinx theater commons. We can learn from the black theater networks. We can learn from the struggles for civil rights in the South. Uh, I was born in Virginia. I live currently in Florida. 
I've lived throughout my life um, south of the Mason-Dixon line at different times. And it is different. <laughs> it is a thing. And it is extremely underrepresented. The US and artists in the South continue to be extremely underrepresented, uh, which led to the creation of an organization called Alternate Roots, mm -hmm. which I'm a part of, which is a tremendous resource for us about how to organize, how to collaborate with organizers, about how to have these difficult conversations about race and equality and justice as we're trying to do artistic and cultural work, yeah? It's a lot. <laughs> All of that is a lot. But that's our charge. And so, um, so I wanna give thanks to and lift up all the other folks who've been out there in the field doing this work and paving the way and creating models, which we're gonna talk more about tomorrow. And I also wanna acknowledge that we're not the only ones trying to figure out how to do this now. That Native American theater artists, First Nations, First Peoples artists, and indigenous artists in this country are in a similar place as Middle Eastern communities in terms of there is no infrastructure. There is no national network for contemporary artists in theater, right, for them. And, uh, and so they're also in this kind of early stage how do we get together all of our nations that haven't always been friends, let's be honest, <laughs> right? All of our communities that don't always get along, <laughs> all of our histories that are, have such complex and different relationships to the United States, national government, yeah? And how do we build solidarity without erasing any of that, um, but really creating a vision for the future, as Taranj was saying? So um, I wanted to plant those seeds and offer some of those questions and offer to you that we'll continue to explore them and unpack them and talk more about coalition building tomorrow. And it is a tremendous, really tremendous honor for me personally to be here with all of you uh, as, as colleagues. And I'm so excited for what it is that we're gonna create together. Thank you. Um, all right, so I want to thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Kate. I want to invite the rest of the MENA Steering Committee to please join us on stage. <coughs>
Um, well, basically, I wanted to be. Who are you? Who am I? You spoke in the uh, uh, playwright. Um, I just, uh, you know, we've been talking about coming together and trying to create a presence, everything Andrea was talking about. And um, uh, um, it's been a long time coming. It's been a, just a, a long slog and a long struggle and trying to create a presence uh, in the, uh, on the theater, scene, in the theater scene here. And I just uh, wanted to, uh, you know, for my two cents and, uh, um, you know, to your question, and I'll pass it along in two seconds. You shouldn't have given me the microphone. <laughs> <That's not. laughs> because I'm gonna, this is going to become a therapy session. <laughs> and really unload the, the anguish and the struggle <laughs> uh, of trying to just say, you know, we're here, we have a voice. And to your question, you know, uh, where might we be 20 years from now, 50 years from now? I mean, I, I keep trying to stress that we're not a conduit for the Middle East. I mean, we are yes and no. Uh, that is part of our identity, but we're also part of the diaspora. We all, we're also immigrants, and we have this, uh, we have a voice um, that's partly emanates from the Middle East, but also emanates from our experience here. And I sort of want to keep emphasizing that we are, you know, Middle East Americans. Uh, and that has value, and that's a voice worth hearing from. And if tomorrow all the wars and all the conflicts uh, stopped and ceased, and there was a wonderful resolution, and we all walked away happy, we'd still have something to we'd still have something to talk about. We're still relevant in that we are a community, we have particular experiences, and um, I don't think we should be shy or tentative about uh, expressing that identity on the American stage. Mm. Thanks, I, I'm Toranji Gizarian, artistic director of Golden Thread. Um, uh, I wanted to become a part of the steering committee because uh, I always think about what do I wish existed that I could benefit from. Uh, and so if it doesn't exist, then you know who can I get together with and make it happen? So I think the steering committee was that. I was excited to know that other people were interested and were willing to put in the work because the idea has been there. <laughs> But I think the individuals who are willing to do the work has not necessarily always been there. So this moment felt uh, rich and rich with possibilities and um, great potential. Hello, I'm Denmo Eberly. I'm an actor and a writer. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, my inspiration to join the steering committee, I think, came from a, a place as an artist of feeling that the discomfort of the stories I want to tell, um, doesn't all, they don't always have a place from an interior perspective. And I think the steering committee and the presence of this gathering started to pose these larger questions where I, I think really for the first time I sort of felt like these are producers and, and directors, these are, um, you know, we're coming at this from a larger perspective. and. I think I've personally had this question of like how, how, what are the resources we need to be able to tell the stories we want to tell, all the way from the production, but also the process, and wanting to be a part of that conversation very much so, if nothing else, then to make sure that those questions have a place and a space to be heard, and that you know together we can find ways through. Um, I'm Tracy Francis. I'm a director and producer, and I, I think I've been involved with the, the Middle Eastern uh, theater community for a long time. And like Toronto, these ideas have been coming up again and again, and nothing's ever really happened with them. I feel like the conversations just have kept going. Um, and for me, I'm just really interested in actually doing something. Finally, I think this kind of they kind of have coalesced in the last couple of years about like, okay, we think we're 
ready to take some kind of action and just to find a way to bring community together into how, how do we support each other as a community, how do we make sure we're better represented in the national theater scene, and how do we advocate for ourselves. Well, you have your own mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Deborah Eliezer, um, she, her, hers. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a theater maker in the model of ensemble theater, so um, I'm very interested in how a thing gets done, uh, as much as what it is that gets done, the, the, the product that is made. So for me, um, being in the, in the process of community and asking very difficult questions um, or passionate questions and being part of dialogue, that um, will, with the objective of, uh, you know, creating change yeah. and um, uplifting uh, the complexity yeah. of uh, the identity of this community and the identity that I feel, both from a diasporic position uh, of always feeling um, othered in some way, uh, and and also this idea of belonging and where do where do I belong and asking those questions. Um, kind of all comes home here. And I love that we're talking about this being American theater because it is, it is no accident that we are in Northern California having this conversation. You know, as a native San Franciscan like that makes perfect sense to me that this is where the Delta uh, meets here. So, um, and I guess that that cannot be, um, uh, de-emphasized is, is, is how we have that agency to, to have these conversations and that what we can do with that agency. It's very exciting to me and I want to be on the forefront of that and that's why I'm here. Hi, I'm Evan Lutchkin, he, him, his. I'm a theater director, producer, um, translator and writer now. Um, that's new, I keep forgetting. Mm -hmm. um, I guess for me, this idea of uh, giving back is a big part of steering committee involvement, I think, because um, the reason why I have a career is because of the Middle Eastern community. Um, every opportunity, really, that has catapulted me in any way forward has come from folks here in some way. So it felt really important that as this moment started happening, that I raise my hand, step forward in whatever way I can and just help out. Um, and the other thing that was important to me is, you know, I started this journey, uh, Taranj doesn't remember this, uh, he or she always gets annoyed with me when I tell it, but I'm gonna tell the story anyway. Our first conversation, I avoided Golden Thread for four years because um, I didn't wanna be boxed in by my immigrant Middle Eastern identity. And finally she like, forced me to have coffee with her. She's like, everybody keeps telling me there's a Turkish director, who are you and why aren't you talking to me? And um, I said, as young men, artists, strong-headed tend to, I was like, well, I don't care about Middle Eastern theater, I only care about good theater. Um, and she said, good, we care about, well, we agree on one thing. Um, and then welcomed me into the space anyway. So, um, and then 15 years later, I'm up here, and I, you know, I'm like, I'm a Muslim Middle Eastern theater maker. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, like I own this thing. You know, it's nice. Um, so, if I could have that journey, because there was a space, and I got lucky that that space was in San Francisco uh, when I arrived, um, to give me space to figure that out, and to give me resources so that I could make my mistakes and move forward in the way that I needed to. Um, I'm hoping that, and I've seen so many artists not have that in other cities um, because Golden Thread doesn't exist there. Um, so th my hope is that hopefully I can help make a national thing so that no Middle Eastern emerging artist fresh out of school or in school feels like there isn't someone like them or an organization for them. So that, that just feels really important to me. Hi, I'm Pia Haddad. I'm an independent creative director, uh, producer, not director. Um, I guess my reason is um, I'm, uh, I'm Lebanese, but I'm identity confused, like a lot of people maybe. I was born here, I grew up in Europe, and then in Lebanon, and then anyway. <laughs> um, but um, so 
when I started uh, producing, I'm interested in intersectional work because that's when I, I believe I thrive and have different voices. But then I realized in, in order for work to be really intersectional, there needs to be everyone has to have the same um, same seat at the table or same opportunities to have seats at the table. And the fact that the Middle Eastern community doesn't have a coalition. Um, and also the first play I produced was Middle Eastern and seeing all those challenges and opportunities that came up while doing that. So, um, you know, wanting to be part of the conversation and owning my roots in a way also. Um, well, since you kind of already heard from me, I'll give a really uh, personal answer, which is, um, I, gr <coughs> I grew up in places in the United States where there was no Middle Eastern community around. I didn't, ha I didn't grow up in community, right? I grew up totally with that identity confusion and I could just kind of be that um, exotic racial enigma that could like passes a lot of things and uh, didn't always have to talk about it until 9-11 uh, when I lived in New York. And uh, the public perception of my identity changed overnight really overnight, like shockingly so. Mm -hmm. And so, and that was also when I was really coming into uh, my own as a creator of original work and as a, you know, as an adult artist. And so really since then, uh, my adult life artistic journey has been about understanding what this is to be Arab American, to be Middle East, Middle Eastern American. And in the meantime, I've done a whole bunch of organizing and convenings and network building with a whole bunch of other people and not my own community. Uh, that I am still finding and discovering, right? By, and making, making up and creating by virtue of being here and coming together. Uh, and so it's really personal work for me and I'm uh, really glad to be in it. You've already heard from me as well. Uh, Kate Morkini uh, from North Theater in New York, also a, a freelance director. Um, and I, I joined the steering committee really for two reasons. Um, one is that similar to, to what Everett said, I, I was really lucky to find an artistic uh, and sort and um, yeah, artistic home at NOR um, really early on after moving to New York. Um, and, and feel like the, the Middle Eastern theater scene in New York feels really vibrant and you know an exciting, beautiful community. And I wanted to be part of creating a larger, a larger community across the country. But I feel like I hadn't met a lot of the a lot of the folks making work in different parts of the country until joining this group. Um, and so for me, it's about wanting to create a larger coalition across the country so that we can all be engaging and all be part of a larger vibrant community, uh, an exchange of ideas and, and art. So that was the um, one of the reasons. And then I think the other is just a desire to, um, as other folks have said, a desire for um, our work to become part of the American canon, um, that it needs to feel like it's, it's an integral part of the tapestry of the American theater. You know, not, not one thing in a season, uh, you know, but, but you know, an integral part of it, that it feels like it's, um, it's at the forefront of uh, the American conversation. So, those are the two reasons. Um, so, I, um, I thought that this could be an opportunity for you all to ask us questions, specifically as uh, your steering committee. <laughs> um, but I, I want to open that up by, so, so first of all, let me ask, uh, are there questions in the house? Okay. Yeah, how much is here now? Thank you. On it. Nice. I'm curious, since you're from all over the country, um, how do you make this happen? And what is your collaborative process like? Mm, good question. Kate makes it happen. We should pass the mic to Kate to, to 
talk about Zoom and scheduling. And, uh, but one of, I will, I, I don't think we should underestimate the value of uh, an organized person who is on top of technology, notes, reminders, all of that. Please speak to that. I don't know how on top of technology I am. I feel like, in fact, well, anyway, that's another thing. But I, but I, I do feel like the, the biggest thing in terms of uh, just lo logistics and planning has been uh, figuring out how to get us all in the same room uh, digitally. It's hard for us to all meet in person. I think this is maybe the first time that this amount of us have been together in person. But uh, you know, face to face communication, I think, has been has been key. I'll be interested to hear what other folks think, but. Uh, you know, the times that we've been able to have Zoom calls and really discuss ideas and then decide on an action plan and then move forward with that, um, I think has seemed, has seemed helpful. Yeah, and I, I would add that it helped that we had very concrete um, agendas, right? We had the TCG National Conference was happening and the question was, how do we prepare for that? Because mm -hmm. we were, um, um, Kate, Andrea, and I um, are representatives of our community in cohort four, uh, TCG's EDI cohort four. Um, so we needed to prepare for the first cohort meeting that was going to be last June, that was last June. Um, where was that? Miami. Oh, Miami. <laughs> <laughs> So we had to prepare for that, and then we had to prepare for this convening. So we had very sort of concrete agendas. Other people want to speak to it? I, I just also want to add, uh, probably jumping to the end here, but uh, that this is the first steering committee. It, it's going to yes. yeah. all change, yes. and that other people will become the next steering committee. And when we determine what the next phase is, what our next goals are, there'll be a new steering committee, and hopefully, as many as many of you who want to join, join, and so we can take it to the next uh, level. This is just the first uh, iteration. Yeah. We have committed to two, to serving two years on the steering committee. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> that was my understanding. <laughs> I think the thing to say, uh, I because I was on staff at mm -hmm. Golden Thread uh, from the time the first convening for the Middle East America commissioning project happened at the LARC, and we've had gatherings like this around the Orient here, um, I'm, I feel incredibly lucky and privileged that I've been at a lot of these. Um, and it was really interesting experience, and maybe it's a part of my understanding of myself in the space as well evolving but the conversation started from like questioning the space like what does this even mean to like we are here you have to listen to us to oh we actually have to compromise to you know there's been like a real um, evolution of the conversation and our relationship to each other and um, it was frustrating at times because it constantly felt like two steps forward, one step back. And I must say, there was a moment, and it really, the seed was planted, I think, 2016 with the Kata and the TCG and the convening. There was like a year of convenings for us um, where all of a sudden it went from, so what are we doing? And it feels like we're here, like finally a bunch of people raised their hands and now we're doing something. And that has been really interesting in the sense that there's a, quite a bit of trust, at least to each other, and that, you know, because of life, I wasn't at the last call, but I knew it was fine. You know what I mean? There was this sort of, there's a sort of, because it's national, because it's so ambitious that, like, you have to put in the work when you say you're gonna put in the work, and then you assume that the other people are gonna take care of other things, and, um, and we've had leaders, and I'm looking at, you know, Andrea and Kate, and Taraj and Jamil in absentia, um, who've also sort of been really beautifully setting course forward a vision of what the conversation might be. 
like how the conversation might be structured. So it feels like, I just wanna say that this feels like a major step forward for me as someone who's been in some of the, like a lot of these conversations along the way. And it made it so much easier to step forward and say, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Because it was so much clearer now. Mm -hmm. And I think we should, you know, celebrate that, that that's not a, you know, that's 13, like when did uh, 28, 2008 is? Yeah. So it's, you know, 11 years, it took 10 years to get clarity enough for a bunch of people who will probably disagree about a lot of things <laughs> to get in the space to disagree. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, Tracy, you were gonna make a comment and then you have a question on that side. Um, I just want to just kind of um, frame some stuff. So tomorrow we're going to do some sessions about really getting nitty gritty of organizational structure and names and all of that. But I also wanted just to kind of pose to you all um, what you guys feel a national coalition, like why that might be important to you or, or not, and what it could do. Because um, we've all been talking about it, but I think part of this convening is to hear from the rest of the community of what this organization could look like and what it could do. And so I'm just, I'm interested in your thoughts. Thank you all. Um, I think you've partially answered my question, but I would like to know, I can see that, you know, you all have put a lot of time and work into making this happen and you've offered something. So I want to know, like, really, what do you hope to take away from this convening? What do you need from us? Um, what are what are your expectations and what are you hoping to get from from? It looks like it's a great turnout, so I want to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so on so to, like on Sunday tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. the day it is. Um, so we will be doing some more working type sessions, and then we will have kind of a smaller kind of working session at the end of the day. And we hope to come away with actually like a plan moving forward of what we're going to call the organization, what we're doing online about it what the organization structure might be. This might be overly ambitious, but mm -hmm. that is some of our goals for the end of this weekend. And to get your guys' input <coughs> as that develops so we are making sure we're reflective of the community. Great. Yep, um, and I want to yeah. encourage us to come up with, um, not just, I, like, the first impulse is to think about what's lacking, right? So then f the next step is what can be done about it? Right? So I want us to come up with what can be done about it. Mm -hmm. What can each of you do about it in your own sphere? Mm -hmm. right? um, uh, Evan mentioned the 2016 <coughs> convening. Like the idea of creating a, um, a group for Middle Eastern American writers in New York, like that came out of necessity and one playwright's willingness to organize. Right and Lark. Kareem Tani also Mona and Kareem Tani. Mona and Kareem, and then the Lark gave them space, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you guys, like the Maya directors, you started talking that year, and then in a year or something, you had like a partnership or an organization. So it's it doesn't have to come from the steering committee. It doesn't even have to be done by the steering committee. Each of you are fully empowered to lead your own little movement or your big movement, right? And we'll follow you. So come up with um, actionable can what? I, can I get to that really quick? Yes. Just to add on to that, you're talking about you know solving a problem or what's lacking. I'd also like to think about what we want to have, not necessarily a problem we're trying to solve, but like what are we dreaming about? What are these bigger ideas and hopes and things we have that are just awesome that we want to do? Just, yeah. I also just want to give a shout out to those who can't physically be here in the space with us this weekend. If you're following on HowlRound, um, please like make comments. If you uh, know folks on the steering committee that you want to have longer <coughs> conversations with, or um, you know send a manifesto, like whatever, <laughs> whatever uh, way that we want this to be a truly national conversation, and we don't want it to be limited to the people who have the time and resources to be in the room, which is why so much of this is being live streamed. So um, please make sure that you connect and find ways to be in the conversation. And also I just wanna acknowledge that, um, you know, nobody really elected us. This is a volunteer effort. Uh, the, you know, in alternate roots we have a saying that is like, 
it does who comes is. Like, if we show up to do the work, then we're taking leadership. Then we are, we are leaders, right? And so as many of us as have the capacity to be in leadership and be in this process and be a part of it. And so, like a lot of times at Alternate Roots, if somebody says, um, well, I think you should do this, then the facilitator says, that is a brilliant idea. You should definitely do it. How can we support you? <laughs> because this is all of us putting in our, our extra volunteer time to make this movement happen. And it needs all of us. So the door is open. And uh, um, I think this Adam is kind of- Adam had a comment, yeah. sorry. Oh, uh, go. go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, one of the biggest worries I had, I feel like I'm channeling Layla now, Layla Buck, um, is- um, Honor Layla. Uh, uh, the, that, we must represent everybody and everyone, you know, like the last thing I want is someone here or in the world to be like, why wasn't I asked? You know what I mean? And I think when we're creating a national movement, uh, there's a certain jet like, you know, you weren't asked this time and now you know. So next time, as Yusuf said, you know, so I just wanna say this is an organic yeah. movement that really came out of the gatherings and connections that uh, these three or four organizations happen to have. We are certainly more heavily representative in the Bay Area, in New York, than in Chicago, than other places, just because those were the places that these companies were located. So I just wanna say that there is uh, the stepping forward as you get inspired and as you want to is a big thing for me because uh, we're, again, yeah, we weren't elected. It was a, uh, it happened. And I think there can be great things that come from when things <coughs> happen like that, so. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, my question is particularly about the two last comments, which is like, um, people who aren't included or people who aren't able to make it here. I'm curious, um, even like with the survey, how are you able to compile um, the people that you sent it to, and who is missing, and how can we as a community somehow support this committee to ensure that the word is out there, and then that, um, that I guess my question centered really around communication. How can we ensure that all of these different initiatives, like Karina and Mona's um, writers group, and the Night of the Lark, or whatever it is happening, somehow is all compiled in a place so that people know um, that it exists and that it's so that they can tap into that. Um, whether that means like a newsletter, even like now we've, we've set up or you've um, compiled these five things that we want to work on. How do we know, uh, if the next convening is in three years, how do we know like what's really working? What's been improving in these three years? Do we have like a, a bi-monthly, bi-monthly like every couple of months uh, type of newsletter where we learn what's going on? Um, Etc. How can we make communication really streamlined in the community so that we're all supporting each other? Thank you so much for asking that. I think that's that's such a good question. To address the the first part of the question about how sort of how did we uh, compile the the folks that we reached out to, it was honestly uh, mailing lists of the different the different theaters that we all work for, and it was about trying to have as, as wide a reach as possible, but knowing that there would be no way that we could reach everyone. And so I'm so glad that you've asked this because we have everybody in this room and we have people watching nationally. And the goal, I, I think, is to compile as, as many people as possible. And I think your idea of a newsletter is, is a beautiful one. You know, the idea that if everybody in this room takes all the contacts that they have in the community and we compile you know, a, a, a massive list and we find a way to, to be in touch with as many people and it's an ever-growing chain that you know, that person says, oh, are, are, did you get that email? You think, oh, let me add you to the list. You know, and it becomes uh, an ever-growing thing. So I would be excited to talk more. And just forwarding the questionnaire. You know, this is what a lot of us just did. <laughs> the survey, I got the survey and I just forwarded to as many people as possible. Not yet. Okay, I'll create one. Well, there is a there is a yes. M E A. There is a well, that's different. Yeah, we don't have. One. There is a Middle East America Facebook group. There are a couple of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. like um, and there's in the same room Facebook group. Mm -hmm. uh, so those exist, but we are not religious. We'll invite them to take the survey too. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did. 
Um, I just want to lift up something that Tracy said, which is um, part of our charge, our time together here, is to answer some of these questions. It's not that we already have answers, but that we are coming together to say, what do we want this to be? Do we want it to be uh, a coalition that has a kind of organizing model? Do we want it to be a service organization that we all become members of? Uh, do we want it to be an organization at all, as in a nonprofit, or maybe not, maybe some other kind of, uh, something like the Latinx Theater Commons model. So I think that those are all living questions that we're hoping to get your voices in the conversation so that we have more clarity by the end of the weekend about, well, what direction, what's the, what's the group vibe, or what direction does this organically want to go in? Uh, Homaira, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I actually I want to answer the question as to why I'm here. And first I want to start out by thanking all of you guys for all your amazing work. Can we just clap? I, I, I feel it's, it's, it takes leadership like yours to get us all together. I mean, I have been working in theater for 10 years but really my only connection to the MENA community has been to Ryan to Everin, um, you know, and, and a couple of actors that I've worked with, but I, I always felt outside or didn't make the effort. So just being in here with everyone and hearing similar stories and uh, hearing <laughs> stories about, you know, actors being roped in to do free work. It just, it, it feels really good because we all have, you know, a lot of commonality. So that's why I'm here and I really want to thank you all for doing all this work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a question here. Yeah, you want to? Hi, I was just gonna ask a clarifying question um, because uh, this was mentioned that you all had come up with these ideas during TCG conferences. Are we affiliated with any organization, or would this convening be like a TCG specific initiative? I guess I'm I'm uh, like asking about organizational affiliations that exist, or would be we be something independent? Um, we are certainly TCG adjacent. I would say, you know, uh, the TCG affinity space was one of the many places where conversations took place. We really believe in a lot of the stuff that uh, Elena and em Emilia are doing at TCG. Um, you know, Latinx Commons was part of HowlRound, um, other places. So we're sort of in that space. I think some of the conversation will be about, does this make sense for it to be launched as an under an umbrella organization, or do we feel like we're going to do it ourselves and set up a whole new model? So I think some of the models that have happened, which have ha been in tandem with larger institutions like TCG and HowlRound. Um, those will be discussed tomorrow. Um, currently, we're, I mean, I feel like Kata has been, like, we basically have used the resources of every organization that's already <laughs> doing this that would help us and have us there and pay for things. Um, so that's, you know, we're crafty. But, you know, that's what we are. So we've done that, but um, in terms of where we take it from here, I think that's gonna be part of the conversation. I, I had a question, um, and I'm not sure if it's going to, yeah, where it lands, but just thinking about your group as a, a larger, as community members, um, for forthcoming agendas, and given that we've talked about identity at every single conversation so far, is there any conversation, or can there be any conversation, about the census, and yes. how artists, are uh, highlighting the in a popular community so that we get the resources we need. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, let's do it. Are you taking notes or? I think we're recording, no, right? Recording. There's There's recording. Recording. recording, right? No, like, don't forget that idea. <laughs> I was just going to comment really quickly on that. I think there, there is other outside of the theater community, like the Arab American Discrimination, I forgot the actual name of the organization, but they've been lobbying for that for years to get um, Middle Eastern and North African folks on the census. So there is a lot of efforts around that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of efforts. I think what I'm speaking to is yeah. integrated community. 
community okay. Are you action. speaking in a mic? No. no. <laughs> just, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to, by the way, to use your words, lift uh, the idea around it's going to take multiple community actions. Yes. And if we, as a, as a community of artists, are just coming around with the idea of our own identity, I think, and the stories we want to tell, identifying the group, uh, giving a number to it, a size to it, so that you can talk about how to finance for it. Mm -hmm. All of this is actually connected to uh, census. Um, so you're gonna bring board members based on who you serve and how you serve them. Anyway, it's a very large topic, and I think as many folks who can be engaged in it uh, would be great. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, I wanna sort of take your question and put it under like a maybe even a slightly larger umbrella. I keep doing the political thing, which is nice, it's appropriate, I guess. Um, but I think it's also, as we talk about what this organization is, activism, art making, right? Like these are, I, I think I can say every single person on this uh, panel here carries both of those titles in different ways. And I think this specific organization where does activism, both within the theater community, which seems more obvious, and then outside of the theater community in the way that it, we interact with larger movements around equity, census, Muslim ban, whatever it is, um, you know, how we engage with those issues is, I think, a conversation. And it's really a conversation about where we want to focus and where the group feels like, in what, which, which what ways we can engage with everything. And I think that's all within range of this conversation. So I, I'm really glad you brought that up because I think that's a question that's gonna continue to come up. I mean, Andrea, you had brought up like, is this an organization that makes statements officially about horrible political actions our government takes? Is that a thing we wanna do? Or is that we just only do that when a theater company does a horrible thing? <laughs> you know, like where we're, we're, we're there plenty of those. That's always that. So it's a, I think it's just a conversation. But I really appreciate you lifting that very specific question because I think it the specificity of it is yeah. around the practicality of defining the population so that you can fundraise well for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, like, keep the art, the artivism of it. Um, it, 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 you know, I, I, I have a thing about the census in my, my show, uh, just, I, I put it in there so that just to remind people, I have a show about Jewish Iraqi identity and it's like, um, you know, and, and about being American and sort of like the myths about what it, or what it is, the fact that you can't tick the Middle Eastern box. Um, yeah, so, and I, and I support what you're saying because it's really important that we um, keep um, identifying and defining who it is so that then we can have more agency as a group. Actually, that's exactly what I was going to say. So it's just, it is, it's just we need to identify who's, I mean, for me, what's happening now is huge. The fact that we've all gathered together over this weekend, we're creating visibility for ourselves. Um, uh, we're hopefully empowering ourselves by coming together, and by doing so, we hopefully placing ourselves on the map so funders look at us and go, oh look, there they are, mm -hmm. and maybe we need to di direct some of that money towards this group that's assembling and identifying themselves and saying, excuse me, we also have a voice, fund our voice, fund our projects. So uh, yes, it's just being a little more, more aggressive uh, about um, uh, saying we're here, you know, being visible about it and uh, not hiding. I think our past has been characterized by wanting to be kind of hide in the background mm -hmm. and, and, and just uh, not step forward. And I think what we're doing now, the fact that we're stepping forward uh, is huge. So this is very encouraging for me. what everyone was saying about kind of more of the political work and organizing. And again, like these are conversations we can have if we want to take it in this direction, but the idea of advocacy for our community and how do we organize that. Um, it's like I can remember certain instances where a theater might do something 
that was not favorable to our community and there were frantic emails sent all over to people we thought about and we're all signing petitions and and it was you know there was action but it wasn't in the most organized um, effective way and so I'm, I'm interested in having a conversation about if there are more organized ways to advocate for a community or to have that kind of more unified voice when something comes up that we need to address. <laughs> um, I also wanna say that I, I feel personally that it's important that we don't put the burden of representat representation on this in the sense of trying to force everyone to agree on everything, mm -hmm. right? Because we know that's not gonna happen. So. <laughs> um, what this can be though, is a place where we come together, we identify uh, things that we are passionate about and other folks who are passionate about working on that too. And then those folks have a platform and an infrastructure and a way to connect and move something forward together. So that, you know, if there's an issue like the census that I really want to work on, maybe not all of these folks want to work on it, but maybe half of us do. And we can, and whatever this gathering place is, can be a place that those initiatives launch from without having to say, we all have to agree on every thing, right? Um, so I think that as we refine what does this structure and process look like, uh, we want to make it flexible enough that it can, can continue to be inclusive and uh, push our own comfort zones and make things possible that just simply wouldn't be possible if we weren't organized. Other questions in the house? Other questions? Are we creating a, uh, wasn't there a website idea at a certain point? Yes, there's going to be a website. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there, did I see a hand go up? No. Um, okay, um, I think that's a good place to end because um, after <coughs> this, so we're taking a break after this and then we have a session on uh, representation or represent increasing representation of MENA plays in academia, yes? Um, so that's, so you'll see we t we, we've talked about mentorship, we're talking about, um, um, I can't pronounce, um, is it academy or Ac academia or academia. Academia. whatever it is. <laughs> Um, and then tomorrow we're talking about coalition building. Uh, so those are like three aspects of the, the uh, I guess, out, outward aspects of our work. And then the working sessions in the morning, this morning and tomorrow morning are gonna be sort of the inward uh, elements of how we work together. And this morning we talked about our top priorities, strategizing about them, and tomorrow morning we're talking about what, Andrea? Uh, well, first we're talking about naming our-, our Naming right? and, 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 and defining and what we call ourselves, and then moving yeah. into coalition building and structure. Yeah, and I, I have kind of a random question that I just wanna throw at you. Show of hands, is there anyone who is concerned about our national coalition being too political. <laughs> For those watching, there are no hands going up in that <laughs> I, I just want to ask that because I don't want to assume, you know, what we. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Good point. I don't know what do you think I mean by that. What What well, would I be have, a concern? I have no idea what you oh. mean by that. Is it political enough, though? To me, does that mean we should be endorsing individual people and individual races you know, throughout the country in every community that we're in? That might be too political if we were gonna start saying, hey, here's a list of the council people and aldermen we want you to elect. That might be too political, maybe, but that's why I don't understand this. I don't know what you're exactly asking. Are you talking about advocating for individual political races? Or you're saying, this group can get super out there talking about 
political matters that matter to us. Well, as an advocacy organization, if we're <coughs> advocating for ourselves, there's a range of action that can be taken. Yeah. So I think one of, one of the questions in my mind is what is that range of action for an advocacy organization? And that's something that we can talk about more tomorrow because we are at time. Um, so, so no mic for you. Was some, something to think about, um, and I want to invite you to come to the, um, those of you who self-identify as Middle Eastern and North African theater artists to join us for the first session tomorrow, which where we talk about the nitty-gritty of naming our, our coalition and what kind of organization and decision-making structure we want to have. And Andrea is going to be leading that with Tracy and Layla. And, and Layla. Layla. Okay. Layla. Great. Uh, thank you. Take a break for 30 minutes, and we'll see you back here in uh, 4:30. Thank you.